What's up, guys? Everybody doing right this afternoon? Mm. Ah, well, how's it going, Paul? Time to relax? Yes, it is. After the week I've had with this machine, <laughs> I don't think a glass of wine is going to do it. I think this may involve a, a couple of shots of Maker's Mark or something. I've never done a turbo up until now on a side by side. And, um, <laughs> it's the craziest ass, uh, plumbing nightmare I've ever seen, especially when you're have got one hose that was not cut the right length, not by me, by somebody else. And that kind of derailed it. Otherwise we would have started this thing up this week, but Hey, that was beyond my control. I guess we'll have to, uh, get Tracy to come back down so we can actually finish this thing up. All right. Well, to business, everybody, thanks for uh, joining us today. And I'm going to swing back around to a couple of questions. I was either couldn't answer, couldn't get to, or had to do a little bit of research on. There was one about a black Z450R, and that was from, well, what was your name? Michael Galando, I believe was his name. And I told him he probably needed to adjust the TPS or he was asking how to adjust the TPS. And I told him initially that it was a resistance value that you're looking for with the voltmeter. I was incorrect. It's actually a voltage that we're looking for. And you're looking to get the, the DC voltage in between the yellow and the black and blue on those three wires that are going into the TPS sensor itself. Uh, I want to caution you if you're doing this, resi resist the temptation just to cram your tester or the, the leads of your tester into the wire and damage that insulation. That's going to be an open point for, guess what, corrosion to get in there. So either use a probe kit where you're going in on the connection itself or they make an adapter for it where you can get to those three, those three wires. The, um, and I believe that testing harness is a 908-90-03204. But if you're like me, you're just going to use a probe kit. And once you've got it in there, you're looking for an output voltage of in between 0.679 and 0.681 volts DC. So that's what you're after. Another question I did not get to because it came in late in the game. Chris slash Bob came in with a 2007 KLR650 issue is hard starting. Think carb is correct. Once it runs all day, it will start with warm. Has spark, but is it strong enough? Compression? Thoughts on what to check? I'm not going to read that next sentence because I don't think that's part of the question, is it, Hank? <laughs> um, Chris, it sounds to me like um, you probably just need to do a valve adjustment on this one because what's happening is when the engine's cold, your clearances are all shrunk in and it is um, it is not letting that valve close all the way. Now you're probably starting it and starting it and starting it and it's getting just enough heat in there to where it'll eventually fire off. But once it's warmed up, well, guess what? It, it'll, it'll continue to run and be easy to start. I usually see this on small displacement machines more than the larger, but chances are, especially on your, your intake side, it's probably a little bit tight on that valve clearance. If you get those adjusted correctly, you should be good to go. All right. Let's see what else we've got. Well, y'all are starting to stack up over on the, uh, the chat. Let me at least get to one or two of the ones I missed last week or that were sent in later in the week. David Miller had asked me a question. Replaced all electrical components on a Honda Fortrax 300 and still gets no spark. I'm at a loss. Any, idea, any ideas? Wasn't Honda certified shop for four months and they couldn't figure it out. Well, all right. Here's what I think it may be. If you've replaced everything electrical on there, then that tells me it has to be something mechanical. So I would hazard to guess that maybe your flywheel, which is also part of your timing, as well as your charging circuit, maybe that wood or that uh, that locking key has sheared. It can happen. And if that is off, well, guess what? That's going to mess up your timing. So I would say let's make very sure that you're actually at top dead center when that when that uh, flywheel marker says that you are. 
there's no reason to take it off yet, but just see, bring it around a top dead center and then shoot, just put a screwdriver in the top of the spark plug hole and see if you're actually at that top point or not. Zeeland Wiley had asked me, I replaced a cylinder on the cylinder on a two, an O2 recon. Okay, brake cylinder, gotcha. <clears throat> brakes are adjusted all the way tight and three clicks back. Every time I try to bleed the brakes, nothing changes. Fluid comes out the banjo bolt and the bleeder, but the lever doesn't change. It was fun before I raced the, before I replaced the cylinder. Any ideas? Man, talk about making a giant step backwards. Well, that leads me to believe that um, uh, the problem is you're in your bleeding process. Are you sure you're doing it right? Because I've been fooled before. Man, I think I've got all the air out of there, and yet it doesn't work right. So chances are you just need to flush out all the fluid, and let's try again. You may even want to try back feeding it from the from the caliper up to the uh, the master cylinder, just a thought. All right, let's get over to our chat and see what all we've got. Well, y'all are busy today. Good. Loving that. Paul Gravinsky, time to relax, John. How have you been doing? Did I mention that the Bayou was back at my shop again? Waiting on a replacement starter now. Pollen sure doesn't help. I tore down this, tore down a 20 horsepower this morning uh, at zero dark 30. <laughs> the pressure release was busted pretty bad. Man, you and you and Bayou, so you should be the, the Bayou guru. They, they seem to gravitate towards your shop. Let me know what you find on that. Paul also said, LOL, you were drinking your water while I was drinking a protein shake. Man, I won't be drinking water later, that's for certain. Mm. Steve in New Zealand. Hi, John. Any suggestion for purchasing a secondhand ATV? Hard pass to go past a, um, a 700 Grizzly. Well, 700 Grizzly is a great machine. Um, this is one of my favorites out there, especially in the big bore segment. Yamaha, they've had a winner since day one, especially when they went away from the 660 to the uh, um, the 700 fuel injected engine. It's it's a very strong engine that has served them well. As far as what to look for when you're buying one, if you go to our YouTube channel and um, we look at the different playlist, there's one for what to do, how to evaluate and buy a used ATV. And I give you some pointers in that in that particular video of what you need to look for and uh, hopefully not get, uh, you'll hopefully end up with a good unit. But yeah, if you're looking at a 700 Grizzly, you're in the right ballpark. Uh, I've always liked that, that particular machine. <clears throat> Mr. Matthews, A. What will happen if I cut my cat off off a 09 GSR 750 and just ride like that over time? Well, the catalytic converter, it is you know, trying to keep the environment clean. So one, your machine is definitely not gonna pass any type of smog test, but, and two, I believe that's highly illegal. So um, I certainly wouldn't post any pictures about it, but as far as any long-term effects as the way the machine performs, uh, it shouldn't do anything. It shouldn't do anything. Um, <clears throat> Jonathan Malux. Hey, John, hope all is well. I have a 2000 player Sportsman 500 HO in the shop and it has no all wheel drive. Checked all body grounds and, well, we need a circuit power to all wheel drive switch and it still has nothing. I've read something about that one. Jonathan, I know I have with um, the, the all-wheel drive not working correctly. I can't remember the the note on it. I'll tell you what, Hank, make a uh, make a, a note of that because I know I've read about this. I know that I have, and let's see if I can go back and the uh, onto the Polaris website and pull up their their dealer notes on it. And uh, give me till next week to come up with a, a accurate answer for that one. Sounds like a deal, Jonathan. <clears throat> H2 Breezy, Partzilla, better than Godzilla in all sorts of ways. <laughs> Amico Garamond, 2021 Polaris high lifter with oil pressure causing the rear oil to be pushed against the flywheel causing damage to seal. Huh. High oil pressure or do you think it's crankcase pressure 
from uh, maybe blow by flywheel causing damage because um you're talking about the flywheel seal then the, you know that's not that's not part of the pressurized oil system uh oil circulation system that is just down in the crankcase so that makes me wonder if you've got a little bit too much blow by happening on the uh on the rings any chance um it went swimming maybe uh partially damaged the rings just a just a thought i'd say do a compression test and see where you are and make sure that uh, the cylinders are in good good uh good working order otherwise if they're not compression goes past the rings over pressurizes your crankcase i'm surprised that it hasn't pushed out oil into your your um air box why don't you take a look in there and see if you've got some pooled at the bottom Tell me if I'm right or not. Wayne Townsend, good afternoon, everyone. Well, good afternoon to you, Wayne. Thanks for joining us. Paul Gravinsky, if he needs to purchase a new tool for the TPS, I have one that I never used that I bought OEM carb for that foreman and it fixed the TPS code. Are you talking about uh, the adapter where you can get in there and set the TPS? Is that what you're talking about, Paul? Shade and Miranda Larson. Hey, John, love the videos. How would you be, how would I be able to get a goodie box from you? I try to tune in every week and use Partzilla for our business. Thanks. Well, I think you're on your way to accomplishing that. I think you want to get in, in touch with Shade and Miranda Larson through a, a private message. Maybe we can set them up with uh, one of our inf soon to be infamous um, Partzilla boxes or swag bags. Why not? <laughs> Paul Gravinsky chimed in. My 660 runs awesome after the rebuild, rebuild, and it's 20 years old. I'm not knocking the 660 too much. I just think the, the 700 was a, a strong advancement in the large displacement line for Yamaha. No, nothing against the, uh, the 660. I just like the 700 better. Fuel injection when I can get it, you know? <laughs> Mark Hurts, Hurt. Herk Schwitz, just trying to wake it up a bit. Did I miss another question from Mark? Oh, yep, I skipped right over it. Mark Herkskowitz, looking to do a top-end rebuild on my 09 YFC450R and keep it on pump gas. Thinking of going to a stock bore 12.5 to 1 piston and a BR, BNR XC2 cam, or do you think it's a bad idea and keep it OEM and reliable? Now, the 450R, it, it lends itself to... Um, getting ramped up a little bit more and going to 12.5 and a little bit different cam that would be a really lethal i mean a good combination and i assume that you're already um you're, you probably already replaced the, the muffler on it uh, with something less restrictive if you are going to do both of those uh those are all three of those items you will need to start messing around with the air fuel ratio because it is that's, that's going to wake it up a lot so uh, you'll need to get an appropriate appropriate map and uh, one of two ways you can do that. That's either to reflash the ECU, which is the preferred way to do it, although it's sometimes more uh, expensive, or use a piggyback system like uh, from DinoJet, where it's just basically lying to the ECU a little bit to uh, compensate for it. Um, I like I like doing the uh, the stock reflash. Uh, I'm pretty sure Alba Racing offers a, a reflash, and they probably already have a map ready to go for that particular build. Um, matter of fact, I'm using Alba Racing for that machine back there. I mean, uh, we did a uh, low compression build because we we did turbo it. Of course, we've got aftermarket exhaust, you know, different connecting rods, and then a GYTR gear reduction kit. And uh, I'm getting ready to mail off the ECU to them where they could flash it and then just shoot it back to me. So why don't you give Fernando a call at Alba Racing, tell him I sent you over there, and I bet you they can take care of uh, getting your, your ECU reflashed. All right. Yeah, I'll just answer that. Chris R., how's it going, Chris? Any crafty ideas to plug front headlight electrical sockets while running without lights on the machine? <sighs> Not that I've, I've never, uh, I've never had to do that before. Well, you just want to keep the dust out of them, I guess. Hmm. Nothing permanent that I could come up with. 
But hey, I will check around. What the heck? Jonathan came back. Check magnet up front differential. It's all good. Just stump on this. Uh, also, dash flashes on and off inter intermediately. Any ideas? Check magnet on front differential. All right, Jonathan, what were you talking about there? Oh, okay. Yours is the the four the five hundred HO. All right, and you check the uh, the front magnet in the differential, and it's doing what it's supposed to do. What I what I read about had something to do. It was an electrical issue. So give me a little bit, and uh, let me research it, and then I'll get back to you. Mr. Matthews, a hey, sweet. I found you guys and bought a few parts and maintenance things for my bike. I live in Florida, so we don't have any smog test. Gotcha. I cut the exhaust on for a slip on. I cut the exhaust for a slip on, but I cut too much and was just wondering, uh, just wondering or waiting. Yeah, go ahead and uh, scab it back together then if you've already damaged it. And yeah, just don't advertise it. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. Wayne Townsend. Hey, John, what's your take on the Honda Goldwing GL 1800 first generation versus second generation? All right. If you're talking about the, the 1200 to the 1500, is that what you're referring to? Or we talk, or, or you said 1800, didn't you? Okay. Um, the, you did say 1800, the first generation to the second generation. Well, the first generation that was groundbreaking, but the machine pretty much remained the same except for styling for the most part. So you're, you're, basic workings of uh you know the engine and drivetrain and transmission uh, that really didn't change all that much if at all uh, they just basically redesigned it and you know that's that all boils down to what you like to look at i'm more of a first generation guy because that's the one i'm i'm used to and yeah hell <laughs> it's kind of like my car my newest car is like 20 years old not counting my truck so you know what i've lean more toward the first generation yes May, mainly because it's a little bit more uh, it's a little bit cheaper it's um been around forever the parts are readily available even if you had to replace any of the body panels it's, it's not that expensive compared to the second generation second generation it, it is more advanced in the way it uh, it looks but as far as operation they're, they're going to be very close in performance mr matthews for my CS racing exhaust to come in. Oh, you're waiting for that to come in. Gotcha. Shade and Miranda came back. Also, can a weak primary clutch spring on a Ranger 800 cause it to grab the belt and spin the, the trans causing difficult shifting? Actually, yes, because it, there should be a certain amount of tension that it has to overcome before it starts moving. And if there isn't enough tension there, yeah, that belt is going to get caught by the sheath and then push it forward or you're, you're having to hold it back. So that can definitely be the case. Paul came back. Chris, I would have some electrical sealant handy and maybe try a wire, wire, wire tube heat shrink and place it over it. You don't need those sockets getting rusty. Good advice, Paul. Yes, it is a meter with all the proper test leads. Gotcha. And it looks like Partzilla has, has reached out to uh, Shade and Miranda Larson. All right, cool. <laughs> Not a problem. You're welcome. Mark came back. No, I'm doing all three of them at the same time, then adding a Vortex tuner. Well, then you're good to go. And uh, if you'd rather use the piggyback, that it will work just fine, providing they have a, uh, a map set up for that particular um, combination of... Uh, Piston, cam, and exhaust that you're running, but you should be fine. SSI 0300, any common issues on a Yamaha B Star 1100? No, not really. I mean, we sold more V Star 1100s than any other machine in the V Star line. Uh, the 1100 was just the most popular one. The price point and uh, the, the way it rode, it was easy to ride, low, low seat height. We never really had any issues on it, and I, I don't remember even a single recall um, coming across on the V-Star 1100. I mean, I remember they had a, a fairly severe recall on the 1700. Had to do with a uh, a bearing behind the uh, the clutch, so all of, all of that had to come apart so you could get it replaced. But the 1100, no, those things are bulletproof. 
I wouldn't be afraid of them at all, even a high mileage one. <clears throat> Chris R. at Paul M. Mine too. Mine too. 4 YFM 660. Lots of upgrades and help from JT. Got it screaming. Yeah, we did. We did dial that one in. You did all the work. I just kind of pointed you in the right direction a little bit. <clears throat> Francisco Lanzano. Hello, I have a Goldwing 2013 steering bearings feel good. I use Centromatic and having a wobble at around 40 miles per hour. Can I, what can I do to prevent this wobble? Well, that doesn't really sound like a, uh, a bearing issue to me. That that sounds like a, a front tire possibly cupping. And the tires usually cup because the, the suspension is um, getting a little worn or may need to be going through. So that's probably what I, the way I would approach it first. Um, when's the last time you did a fluid change on your front forks? Maybe time to go ahead and do that. Now, if you are having to replace the uh, the steering bearings, we do have a video for that. Now, granted, this on, on a older Goldwing, a 2007, if memory serves. But I can tell you, you better be ready for a whole weekend. <laughs> uh, watch the video of uh, us doing it. It's, it's pretty involved, but don't be afraid. It can be done. And we actually did not use the, uh, the OEMs. I think we went with an all balls kit which uh, had tapered bearings is what we ended up going with on our 07. It worked out pretty well. Mark came back. I was told the ECU could only be reflashed for exhaust and intake and or without the lid, not reflashed once ported piston or higher compression and cam. Who told you that? I find that a little bit tough to believe. Uh, yeah, give them a call over at um, Alba Racing. Because if they if they can flash this, they can flash that. I mean, they shouldn't have a big problem. I guess I'll try giving uh, Daza a call, or even though I'll be running an RP exhaust. Okay. Um, Mr. Matthews A came back. Hey John, what is your favorite all time toy? Uh, ATV, sport bike, or what is it? Driven or always wanted? Well. <laughs> I mean, I've had a bunch of motocross bikes, and but uh, as they say, with age comes the cage. So my favorite machine now is the one right behind me. I cannot wait to take that out on the uh, the side by side tracks that they have uh, not too far away from here. Um, so yeah, I will be wringing that thing's neck here in a few weeks. So yeah, anything pure sport like uh, on the Razor line, but the what the reason I like this so much is it has a real transmission and it's just you doing the shifting not anything else not a lazy uh you know, engagement of a uh, constant velocity uh, belt system which is great don't get me wrong i just want the raw controllability of a, a pure sports machine so yep the yxz 1000 r so and uh the dream it's slowly coming true see <laughs> uh, beyond that Away from the, the the power sport side, I love doing driving driving events, uh, high performance driving events with uh, just track it here in the south with a little track a toy that I have sitting next door, a little silver M3, really fun car, whole lot of fun. Mr. Matthews, also, what is the difference between a dyno tune and a flash? I've seen some web, uh, websites say dyno and tune. I thought dyno tune was better than a flash tune. It is because the dyno you're actually reading in real time for your particular engine and set up um, what is happening on the air fuel um, ratio. Now, a flash is when they take all the, the information they've derived from a, uh, a dyno tune and just flash it based on your particular you know, combination of cams, piston, and compression ratio, and then uh, as well exhaust. Now, is that going to get you in the ballpark? Yeah, it, it really gets you close. But if you want to get that last 4 or 5%, that's when you would have to take your, your machine to a dyno and have them do a read because every engine is going to be a little bit different. But for the most for the most part, just doing a flash tune, that's going to get you really close as long as you've been 
honest and with all of uh, the modifications that you've done to the engine. Uh, SSI 0300. I bought a 2002 V Star 1100. Any recommendation recommendations on an old filter relocation kit? Oh yeah, there's a couple of different kits out there, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I believe, if memory serves, you have to basically pull the exhaust to change the oil. Now, what the hell Yamaha was thinking when they designed that? I don't know. Be able to get to that to that oil filter, uh, you have to pull part of the exhaust off. So the exhaust, you had to remove a lot of crud just to get to it. We actually got pretty proficient at it at the shop, and I just want to caution you with an oil, relo oil filter relocation kit. Make sure you go with a quality one. Which one? I'm not going to sit here and guess because I haven't thought about it in a long time. But just think how critical of a system that you're messing with. Um, you just need to make very sure whichever one you're using is proven. No, I wouldn't go with any type of um, cheap knockoffs of the real thing because a leak would be catastrophic within just a mile or two if it were to... Uh, pump that oil out. So just be careful if you're going to do that and pick a known uh, reputable one to do it. Mr. Matthews, wait, a fluid change on front forks? That's such a thing? <laughs> no, sorry, just bought my bike uh, a couple. Just bought my bike couple now. So this is all new to me. Oh yeah, well, your front fork oil, thats it's going to eventually wear you know, or get contaminants in it and not function the way it should. It's, it's uh, a lubricant just like any other you know, oil that you've got in your machine or uh, fluid that you've got in your machine, whether it be oil in the engine or coolant for that matter. All those things have a service life. Eventually, they need to be flushed out and replaced. Uh, I would, your machine is on the new side, so I doubt it's time to do seals yet, but it will be eventually because you know, rubber things wear out as well. Wayne Townsend, what do you think about airbags on the 2008 Honda 1800 HP NA? I mean, it is a pretty advanced system that Honda came out with. I mean, if you've got to run into something and come to a, a, a sudden stop, I would much rather get uh, cushioned by a large airbag than just piling my head into the fairing of a, uh, of a Goldwing. But yes. Um, I, I think it's a great advancement, but well, I hope I never have to use the one that's on our, on our, on our machine. I believe it has an airbag. Mark said, I'll message you with who told me that. Okay, cool. <laughs> Mr. Matthews, I really do appreciate you explaining your thoughts on things. That is why I'm here, man. We're all in this stuff together. <laughs> Uh, Paul was uh, reminiscing, evidently. I rem remember my old 1976 XL125. Was your silver, black Honda lettering, and then uh, kind of red pinstriping? One of my friends have uh, one of my friends had one of those when I was. It was actually his dad's machine. I was just mesmerized by it. Of course, I had an XL70 at the time. Chris R wants to know when are we going to get to meet Hank? I don't know, Hank. When are you, when are you going to? Make an appearance. I think I think you're getting called out here. So come on, you need to make a trip up to Georgia and do one of these live things with me. You up for it? <laughs> Paul Gravinsky, dented fuel tank, bought it used. Uh, I hear you. Well, all right, guys, there flew by thirty minutes, just like that. All right, that means I'm going to hang it up, call it a day, and. Uh, Get back to my project, my personal project list. Well, listen, I just want to say thank you to everybody that came out and spent a little time with us today. <laughs> it makes it fun when y'all give me a bunch of questions, and I'll do my best to uh, to get those answered that uh, I couldn't, I didn't know or couldn't figure out you know, that you were asking me. So, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will do this again at three o'clock on Friday next. Y'all take care.